Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> This is close enough. Let's leave the horses here, boys. Okay. Don't forget your rifle. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. That's him over by the corral. Looks like he's alone, all right. He's alone. Who else could stand being around them stinking sheep? Must be something awful wrong with a man like that, Joe. There is. We're going to set it right. Watch him now. I don't see he's wearing a gun. Probably got one hit out nearby. Hello? Your name Gideon Seek? It is. He's your sheep? Yeah. You got anybody helping you? I always work alone. I notice you ain't wearing a gun, Seek. I don't even own a gun. You don't? I don't believe in killing. Well, we do. Most men do. Zeke, this is cow country. You know what that means? Oh, it's my sheep. we got to make an example of you. Other people might get ideas if we don't. Pretty soon the country would turn white with them willies. But I only have a few. Only 24 of them. There's 24 too many. We're going to kill them, Sick. We're going to shoot every one of them. Oh, no. You go run into the law, we'll come back and shoot you. Well, you can't kill them. You try to stop us, we'll have to hit you on the head. I won't do anything. He's too scared, Cal. Come on, let's get to work. Oh, please. Please, don't kill those animals. You just stand right there. We'll be keeping one eye on you. You start the other end, boys. I'll start here. Okay. But you mustn't do it. You'll have a lot of meat left. If you eat sheep meat. I don't eat any kind of meat, but you mustn't kill him. Shut up. Let's get it done, boys. I'm ready. Go ahead, then. Stand back, Steve. You know. You sure Chester's going to bring my mail back to you? Well, he said he would. But though. where is he? The Santa Fe pulled in two hours ago. Oh, well, they have to sort it, don't they? What are you so anxious about, anyway? You expecting a lot of money or something? I could use a little money. Eh? Oh, and there's a man who owes me $20. Oh. Gideon's seat. He's just getting off his wagon there. Well, Gideon's an honest man. He'll pay you. Oh, I know that. I'm not worried about him. Good morning, Doc. Yeah. Marshal. Oh, Morning, Gideon. How are you? Doc, I got bad news for you. Oh? I'd meant to bring in some sheep today, and I was going to pay you when I sold them. Oh, well, I can wait, Gideon. Well, I'm afraid it'll be a long time now, Doc. Oh, that's all right. Something happened, Gideon? I lost my sheep, Marshal. You lost them? I'm going to get some more as soon as I can, and, and I'll pay you, Doc. Now, 
You know I'll pay you. Oh, of course I do. Well, goodbye. So long, get him. Oh. He's a strange one. Yeah, he is. But how could a man lose all his sheep, man? I don't know, Doc. But I got to ride out that way in a couple of days. I'll stop by and have a look. That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, we'd like to introduce a player piano that could have come right out of the Long Branch in Dodge City. Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better, smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. Gideon know where's around, Mr. Jones. He's probably in the shed, Chester. Mm-hmm. What's that big pile of dirt he's got out there? I don't know. Maybe he's digging a well. Oh, no, no, no. That's too much dirt for a well. Huh? Well, then ask him what it is. Well, uh, hello, Gideon. Hello, Chester. Marshal. Get in. Would you come inside? Uh, no, thanks, Gideon. We were just riding by. <laughs> Chester was wondering what you're digging out there. Oh, well, uh... That's a grave. A grave? My sheep are buried there. Well, what happened, Kitty? They got killed. How? It doesn't matter, Marshal. I'm going to get some more when I can. Who did it, Kitty? Tell me. A couple of men. They shot them. They shot all your sheep? Yeah, it's no use asking me their names. I won't tell you. Don't you want them caught? No. Look, Gideon, I know you're a peaceful man. And that you never carry a gun and all, but this is a matter for the law. Now, you tell me who did it so I can go after him. No, I can't. Why not? I don't believe in killing, Marshal. I didn't say I was going to kill him. They killed your sheep, didn't they? You don't understand. Then you better tell us. I don't believe in killing for any reason, even for food. And I don't believe in trying to resist evil. What do you mean by that? Well... If a man strikes me, I don't strike back. But don't you believe in defending yourself? The men who killed my sheep will be punished. They will if I find them. No, Marshal. Their own conscience will punish them. Look, Gideon, you've got a right to think any way you want to think. But so have I. And I'm a lawman. I'm sorry, Marshal, but I can't help you. Those men aren't through with you yet. You get more sheep on here and they'll be back. And the next time they probably won't stop just with a sheep. I'll win in the end, Marshal. You're awful stubborn, aren't you? No more than you are. All right, Gideon. It's your funeral. Come on, Chester. Matt, I didn't see you. 
You weren't looking for me. <laughs> well, did you find something of that window to blow your money on? Now, you talk like I'm a cowboy in with six months' pay. I know better than that. Well, you don't act like it. I was only looking at those wool gloves, Matt. No? Mm-hmm. Oh, those would be nice company. Yeah. Uh, by the way, anything new with Gideon? Well, I haven't seen him since I was out there a couple of weeks ago. He interests me, that man. Yeah, me too. He's not fighting back and all. Maybe he's got something, Matt. He hasn't got his sheep. No. But he didn't get killed, either. If he'd tried to put up a fight, they'd probably have shot him. They're still free to do it, whoever they are. Well, maybe you're right. But at least Gideon's ideas are some different from anybody else's around here. Yeah, well, that's true for sure. And it isn't wrong just because it's different. No. Think about it, Matt. There can't be a fight unless both parties want it, can there? Hey, Kitty, look. Hmm? Getting off that horse, sir. Oh, it's Gideon. First time I ever saw him without his wagon. Yeah. He's going in to see Mr. Jonas. Maybe he's going to buy a new one. Maybe. Um, Kitty, I think I'll go say hello. Oh, sure, Matt. i got to get back to work anyway. Yeah, I'll stop by later on, huh? Good. He's asking a lot of you to trust me, Mr. Jonas. Things are going the way they are. Yeah, there ain't many men I'd trust, Gideon, but you're one of them. Oh, hello, Marshal. Mr. Jonas, how are you, Gideon? Hello, Marshal. You hear what happened, Marshal? Have you told him yet, Gideon? Oh, it's not important. Not important? His house burned down, that's all. Oh? And his wagon along with it. I'm going to rebuild. Mr. Jonas told me yesterday that he's going to put me on the books for enough material to get started. Oh, that's mighty good of him. Oh, glad to do it. Hard-working, honest fellow like Gideon. Must have been a pretty big fire, Gideon. Yes, it was. I mean, to burn your wagon up, too. I got an old wagon out back he can use. Now, you wait here now. I'll go see just how much material I got on the hand. I'll get in. Well, what, Marshal? So they came back and burned your house down, huh? All right, they did. But I'm still not going to tell you who they are. They must want you out pretty bad, Gideon. But I'm staying. They'll kill you next. It's no use arguing, Marshal. Well, it beats me. I don't know what to do. Well, just don't do anything, Marshal. Like you, huh? They can't win. They're doing pretty well so far, Gideon. Now, I can't beat it out of you, but I sure hate to stand by and watch a man let himself be destroyed. I guess we'll never understand each other, Marshal. No, no I guess not. <laughs> Listening to Gunsmoke in your favorite easy chair or out driving? Oh, there you are, in the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better, and Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most.
them. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. You better come outside. Oh, what's the matter? Well, there's a wagon out there, and Gideon Seek's in it. He must be hurt bad. What? There it is. I seen it coming down the street, but there was nobody driving, so I tied the horse up at the rail. Well, what happened to Gideon? I don't know. I couldn't see too good in the dark and all, so I come to get you before trying to do anything. Uh. He's been shot, Chester. He's still alive? Yeah, but we better get him up to docks. Come on, give me a hand. Here. Yes, sir. All right. Do you think we can ride out and find where it happened and maybe track him down? What, at night in the rain? Well, maybe now he'll tell us who done it. I doubt it, even if he lives. He sure does make it hard for the law, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Uh, draw me a beer, will you, Sam? Come in. How's Gideon seek today, Matt? Uh, Doc says he'll be all right in time. But he still won't talk? Oh, he talks all right. I just don't understand him, that's all. Well, I guess you're just going to have to let him have his way, Matt. Here's your beer, Mark. Oh, thanks, Sam. Bartender, bring me another bottle, will you? Oh, another bottle. He sure needs that. Yeah, he's pretty drunk, isn't he? Uh, he ought to be. Sam says he's been here since morning. It doesn't look like he's going to make any trouble, though. Oh, I'm not so sure. He's been drinking like he's awful mad at something. Kitty. Huh? Who's that who just came in? Oh, I don't know. I knew I'd find you, Boyle. You had to come in and get drunk, didn't you? You just leave me alone, Phil. <laughs> Why'd you run off? Man? What's the matter with you? I told you what's the matter, and I'll leave me alone. You ain't quitting now. I'm through, I told you. I mean it. I can't stand it no more. I start something, I finish it, and I told you this morning I heard it ain't finished yet. I don't even like to be around you, Kel. You make me ashamed of myself. You listen. My horse is down the street. I'm a time next to yours, and then I'm coming back here for you. And you're going with me if I have to carry it. What do you suppose that's all about, man? I don't know. But I think I'll find out. Yeah. Excuse me, Kitty. Hello, Boyles. Oh, you're the marshal, ain't you? Yeah. What's bothering you? Plenty. But it ain't none of your business. What did you do to make you so ashamed of yourself? Nothing. nothing. You're a cattleman, aren't you? I'm proud to be one. I sure ain't no stinking sheep herder, no lousy sheep herder. No. And I don't think you're a coward either. What? But you're feeling like one. That's why you're ashamed of yourself. It's kind of hard to beat down a man who won't fight back, isn't it? How'd you find out, Marshal? From you, I guess. We ain't dead. Kel heard about that this morning, but I ain't going on with it. I'm true. I can't stand it no more. You finish your drink, Boyles. I'll be back directly. Well, where are you going, Mr. Dillon? Wait right here, Chester. I may need you. Yes, sir. Well, what do you want, Marshal? I've been talking to your partner, Kel. What? Kind of broken him down, what you two have been doing lately. What are you saying? It's made him ashamed. Now, you heard him. He can't stand it anymore. This Boyles you're talking about, he's drunk. He always gets to feeling sorry for himself when he's drunk. Uh-huh. You shot a man last night, Kel. You left him for dead. 
You better be ready to back that up, Marshal. I'm ready. All right, you can have boils. He won't fight. But you ain't taking me. You think I'm going to let you ride out of here? Enough talk, Marshal. <laughs> Is he dead, Mr. Dillon? He's dead, Chester. But what happened? Who is he? There's a man at the bar of the Long Branch. His name's Voiles. He's drunk. Go lock him up. Voiles? Who's he? It's like Gideon said, Chester. Voiles punished himself. And he was wrong about Kel here. I had to do that. So I guess we were both right. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better, smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> You know, when frontier settlers cleared their land, they left the brush piled around their place and earned the name Nestor because from a distance it looked like a big old bird's nest. Well, next week, a Nestor causes trouble when he won't leave his land. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, John Daner, Harry Bartell, and Jack Moyles. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke L and M. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white miracle tip. So light up. Free up. Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. Smoke.